Hello everyone and welcome back to Painting with Martin. Today we're going to take a look at the Shaw Forts miniatures from the board game Catapult Feud, published by Vesuvius Media, which was also very kind enough to sponsor this video with an actual board game, so I can paint the miniature. I've actually primed this miniature with some Vallejo's um, primer called uh, Light Ghost Grey, as you can see here. And I've also painted <coughs> the face white using some also some Vallejo white because I want to use um, a contrast color or a light colored um, skin paint there as well. Now this is a beautiful miniature. I really like painting this one and more importantly it's very easy to paint. It uses very few colors and I'm taking inspiration from the card art themselves. So if you look at the card arts they are quite easy to identify. I'm going to paint this figure here. So very, very basic gray and dark gray or even black colors with some metallic on top. So uh, there's going to be a slight variation here. I'm going to show you a little bit of variation of what to do. But if you stay with me long enough um, until the very end, hopefully you will learn something and you maybe had some fun on the way as well. So like all miniatures, I'm going to start with the base paint, then go on to some wash, give it some shadow and definition, and then go on to the final step, which is uh, highlights and finishing touches. Now, uh, let's get started. So for the legs and the sides here, I've chosen to use a figure, excuse me, um, um, a paint, sorry, called um, Neutral Grey from Vallejo. And I'm going to dilute it a little bit with water to make sure that I don't obscure any details. Using a palette here, it's quite thick. So I'm using a little bit of water here make sure that it's we don't know details are obscured or anything so we're going to make sure we cover all those details uh, we don't cover the details we cover the miniature and like this sometimes another coat is needed make sure you also cover the inside here the part here inside don't cover the little belt here, or whatever you want to call it, the strap. And same thing with the other side. And there you go, very easy. Now, wash of course your brush in between either, either side. I'm using a size uh, 4 brush, you can use a size 3 as well, but if you want some more control. And as you can see here, I missed a spot here, so I'm going to cover that as well over here. That's what happens. You you can make up mis make some mistakes. You can touch them up as soon as you see them, or later on your choice. Now, with this one done, I'm going to look at the main like surcoat here, as well as the back sides, as well as the um, kind of like like sleeves over here. Um, you can also call it tabard as well, medieval English and as well as the gloves, and I'm gonna use some pure um, German gray from Vallejo. Give it a good shake and squeeze it out here in the palette. Same thing here, I'm diluting it about, I'm taking one part, um, or two parts of paint and one part water, making sure that those beautiful details are not obscured. And same thing here, you can use a smaller brush if you want more brush control. Um, it's fairly easy to cover these details. Here I also want to make sure that I can zoom in here. You can see here that I'm covering the inside here as well with this color. As well as the back side. The other side of the, the inner side here. As well, now the gloves. Now the gloves on the inner side here, you can see that there's a tiny detail here where there's supposed to be some, some skin paint. So I'm gonna to try to avoid that area. Hopefully I will. 
If you don't, like I see I'm doing like this. If you feel that you miss it, you just uh, move back, cover it with some white, and then you go back and cover it again. So you can see that it's fairly easy to paint this miniature. If you're starting out painting miniatures, um, this is a good way to start with this miniature. Now the board game is really fun as well. Uh, one of my favorite board games when it comes to, I want something just very easy and fun to bring out some guests, or if I have kids over, my son loves to play with this. And um, then uh, it's very easy. If you want to use the action cards, then, then that's fine. I prefer not using them because it's just more fun that way. And you just build up some, oh, don't forget the underside here as well, it's covered with this color, as well as the other side here as well. Here I see how I missed the point. Missed the part here. Now he loves to play with it. You just um, set it up, build a castle, place the figures, shoot the catapults, try to knock over your opponent's figures, and you win the game. It's that easy. Um, I picked this, I first actually saw this on Essence Beal in 2016, I think. I think it was. This was a prototype. I must met the designer, Christian Foch. And um, I said, this, this has to be funded on Kickstarter. I backed it in Kickstarter and it was a really big success. There, there's a number of expansions as well to the board game. And uh, I recommend you check these out as well for some added variety. Now, when we've done this, we still have some uh, German, German gray here as well. I'm going to uh, focus my attention on the helmet and I'm going to mix in some, I'm going to clean, clean the brush here. And I'm going to mix in a tiny part of uh, chainmail silver from Vallejo, game color. You can use lead belcher or oily steel as well. Um, just because this is so dominant, I'm just using a tiny bit. And then I'm going to mix it around. And now I'm going to switch my to a finer brush, size zero. I'm going to paint the helmet. And I want a kind of metallic finish to this one. You start by doing a, a, a black or almost dark one because it's a lot easier to uh, build some shadows on it uh, if you ha unless you start with something very light. So, plus you can see the metallic shine through this one quite nicely. And I just want to say a big shout out, a thank you to all those of you who support me um, and subscribe to the channel already um, and like my channel and like my, my videos. Thank you very much. Um, for those of you who just discovered the channel, want to learn how to paint miniatures, uh, put a nice tabletop quality on them, um, I recommend that you um, like and, and share this video. And if you really like it, please uh, also um, please also consider uh, subscribing to the channel. It really helps a lot. So it can be a little bit tricky getting all the details here. As you can see, I made a mistake here, and the easiest to, make to, to fix this is when you dry, you just put some um, white paint on this one, and then you cover it like that. Now, we've got one thing left before we go into the uh, washes, and we are got to paint the coat over here, as well as the uh, clothing for the arms. You can leave the uh, clothing for the arms uh, for later, if you want to put some natural color on them, like um, some... Um, some, uh, some skin color. You can also see here the paint dripped. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a cover here on it. It's gonna be a little bit darker, uh, but that's all right as well. So for the arms, I'm using a um, another color called Cold Gray from, from Vallejo. And um, Oh, 
Oops. Passed it out over there. And for the arms here, I'm just going to put a little bit of the color variation because I like different kinds of gray to make sure that they kind of stand out and you can use you can use any gray here if you want to. Uh, Mechanica standard gray is a good choice if you have Citadel. Otherwise, this is a, a decent one. Now that one is done, you can always use this color to cover color the little strap here and the, on the other side as well. Now, of course, for the final step um, before the washes, we're going to apply some Mechanica standard gray here for which is from Citadel's range. Let's see if you can use it. Yeah, there you go. For the kind of like the one on top of the surcoat. I'm using this one neat. Uh, you can dilute it as well a little bit if you want to. Um, I just like a slightly different variation on regards to the other color as well as here. There you go. Uh, time for some um, some um, some wash. You probably wonder about the skin as well, and we're coming to that. Um, this is what it looks like, pre-painted like this before, so it will, you don't have to wait for the drying time. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply some um, a wash for the face, and for this I've using I'm using a contrast color or speed paint. In this case, a speed paint called Crusader Skin from Army Painter. Uh, you can use um, if you want to go through the regular step, you can use some Cadian Flesh and um, uh, apply it in the base step uh, or some flat flesh from Vallejo. Uh, very, very easy, you just apply it over the entire face, but you leave the tongue out. And the reason for that is the tongue is going to have a different colour. Um, and the this is a kind of like, I think they drew some very liberal uh, interpretations from Monty Python, the, uh, uh, the quest for the Holy Grail, when they saw this one, like the, the, the French guys up on the, on the tower or on the castle, because uh, it is hilarious. Um, and don't forget the small little details in the arms here, the hands here, the, the wrists. And if you feel that it's pooling too much in one of the areas, just take a damp brush and uh, move it around until you get where it's supposed to be. Um, now, for the rest of it, um, I'm going to use some pure um, uh, black wash from Vallejo, covering the entire figure in this one. And I'm going back to my original size 4 brush for this one. And I apply it quite liberally. I want to, of course, make sure that I avoid the, the facial details here. Taking extra care not to do that. I wanted pooling in the recesses. I don't want it to pull on the flat surface. Uh, don't forget the back side. And you apply these simply to make sure you get some shadows and definition out, making sure where you want to actually put your highlights later on. Don't forget the helmet, the arms here, as well as the gloves. Don't forget the underside of the arms, taking care not to cover the Crusader skin from Armour Painter. And when it's dry, you can make sure it's completely dry. Uh, you're ready to apply some highlight and finishing touches. And um, 
I'm going to leave this one aside over here because fortunately for you guys, I've already applied done this step, so you don't have to wait. And this is what it looks like when it's ready. Um, uh, I should have also said that I also applied, we can also do this again now, so you know it. Uh, the tongue, I used some Bugman's Glow, uh, and I didn't actually apply a wash for this one. You could do so if you want to. I'm going to show you how to apply the tongue again. Let's see if I can zoom in here for you guys. This is the tongue. It looks a little bit too dull and dark. I'll zoom out a little bit. But that's how it is. We're going to apply a small highlight to that one anyways. Now, for, for the highlight, I'm going to start by doing the helmet, because that's the one that really is going to show. And that one I'm using some pure chainmail silver from uh, Vallejo. And I'm covering the entire helmet with this one. Now it's really starting to look like a figure because this one really brings out the, the beauty of it. I also want to cover the back part here. You can leave this one as in this color if you want to, but I'm going to do it with this case because it's a very gray figure in general. So the, um, the chainmail silver really brings out the best part of the miniature which I think that the helmet really, really stands out. And if you think that it's too bright, you can apply another dark wash on the helmet and, um, and then apply some selected highlights if you want to. I'm just gonna show you the very basics, however, and let's see if I can angle it here. Don't want to cover the hands and I don't want to cover the facial details. Here it can be quite tricky, so be very careful. As well as on the other side. With a little bit of practice, you'll get the hang of it. I'm quite sure of it. And I mean, you want to make sure you get a nice, smooth, and even coverage uh, cover. So you can actually apply it, this one in one or two layers, depending how good you were in the brush in the first time. I'm applying here a second layer here because I make mistakes. Here you go. Here you go. Looks like this. All right. Um, we're going to come back to the chainmail silver uh, in a bit, uh, but for now, let's apply some neutral grey for, in this kind, we're going to use it pure, we're going to use it neat, and we're going to apply it selectively over the leggings. But here, I want to make sure that I cover only the raised areas. I want to make sure that there are some kneecaps here for him, which was invisible otherwise, and also the kind of like the line underneath here to make sure that that one is also standing out. Going down to the shoes, only the raised areas, leaving some shading in the recesses. And same thing with the, with the sides and the back. I'm only covering one here, so you can see how it's done. Going back up here, all the way up until the very top of the side here. Let's see if I can zoom in for you guys. So, again, touching only the sides, leaving the shading in the recesses. All right, um, with this one done, I'm gonna apply some, um, 
the colour's called again, some uh, cold grey on the arm part here, and same thing here. I want to make sure shading in the recesses, only the raised areas. A very, very effective highlight this way, and a good way of learning to paint for the very first time. And the shading really gives you kind of like a guide of where to paint and where to put the most amount of your attention. So, as you can see here, the elbow is really clearly showing. Now, for the next part, I'm going to cover the inside of the tabard. And for that, I'm going to use some... Um, the same thing here, but the neutral grey as before. Can be a little bit tricky this time, so I might make some mistakes, so please be with me. And it's going to, really is going to make the miniature pop. As well as the sides underneath here, and see if you can get also the tiny sliver here on the side. And the same thing can be done for one of the sides here. Maybe two. Giving it a little bit of extra variation. As well, on the back side here, you can do the same thing here as before. Now, make sure that you get a nice even coverage of this area. So another cover, another light layer might be needed again. There you go. It looks a little bit better like this, I, I believe at least. And now for the as you can see here, I missed a little bit part of the chainmail silver, so I'm going to make sure I come back to this one again. For the gloves, I'm going to use the same um, German grey. Raised areas again here. Very, 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 you can mix in a little bit of white if you think it's too dark, as well as here, you can touch up some mistakes you did made with the lighter gray in a nice way. Now, you're probably wondering about the face, and we are going to cover the face, and we're going to, I'm going to put this one down for a second, and we're going to show you what you call here a Cadian flesh tone from Vallejo giving it a very selected highlight on the face. Using it neat. And blending out some, it's a slightly different color tone. Using it on the chin, the cheeks, the nose, as well as the forehead. Looking something like this. And there's also an excellent way of actually seeing if you made some mistakes here before with putting some gray on or something like that. As well as don't forget the inner hands here as well. Something like this. Now, um, we're going to leave this one to dry a few seconds, but I want to give a little bit of attention here to this one here. You can apply 
um, some Mechanica Stanley Grey again to this one, or even a lighter grey tone. But I'm going to give it a slightly different tone using going for Incubi Darkness by Vallejo, no sorry, by, by Cicidel, um, as it has a slightly bluish tone and it has, makes it, will make it stand out a little bit more. And you can see that on, different, on the side of the box, on the box art of the board game box, that it has a slightly bluish tone there. And you can mix in with this with a little bit of uh, Mechanica Stanley Grey if it's too blue for you. But I think it will complement the rest of the miniature quite well. As you can see here. Let's see if I can zoom in for you guys. Uh, sorry about the lightning. Uh, the lighting. I, I intend to buy a better lamp later on and maybe or even a better microphone. Uh, right now I'm experimenting with this camcorder I bought and I hope the quality is better than the phone that I used previously. Don't forget the back side. Again, if you feel you need some more shadows here, you can apply some selected wash of um, Drakenhof Nightshade and it will be quite nice. I'm not going to do that. I think it's quite okay as it is. Um, now, uh, again, back to the face. Hopefully it has dried a little bit. And we are going to put on uh, some color variation for um, the eyebrows. And the eyebrows are pure black, which is from Vallejo. I'm going to use it neat. And a steady hand is quite required for this one, but I believe having um, uh, this doesn't want to go out. So let's see if I get another black. Sometimes the color gets stuck in the cork. Let's use some glossy black instead. See if that one comes out more easily. Yes, it does. Fantastic. Um, so, only a tiny amount of paint for the eyebrows. As well as the moustache here. I suppose this board is small beard. Um, you look at the card art. So I'm going to kind of give it only a tiny dot here. Like this. Um, two layers might be needed as you see fit. Now we're going to turn our attention to the eyes, which are also very, very difficult to paint, but with some practice, you'll get the hang of it. We're going to start off with some, some white. Uh, a tiny sliver of white. Something like this. And now we'll go for the tongue. Uh, for the tongue, we're going to use some Vistian Red. Here you go. Uh, we're going to come back to the surcoat a little bit, leaving the eyes to dry. And some tiny dots on the metal parts here. Will really make it pop. 
If you're wondering about the base, you can select any just painted black if you like, and it will be more than acceptable. So you can see here, now it's kind of like looks quite nice. And now back to the eyes, and we're gonna put some a tiny tiny dot of black in the eyes for the for the pupils. I'm really bad at this, so bear with me. This one and this one looks quite okay. And there we have finishing the Shaw Fort miniature. Um, if you like this video, please again uh, subscribe to the channel. And for more content like this, I have more videos planned in the future. Um, otherwise, thank you very much for watching and see you uh, next time uh, on Painting with Martin.